So in this lecture, we will talk about public goods and uh, the two main things we're going to talk about are, well, what are public goods to begin with and how can they be financed if people have an incentive not to contribute to the public good, which is known as free riding, and also if people have different valuations of that public good, so some value it very highly and others not and how how can we deal with the fact that that people may not readily give a government the information about how highly they value a public good this sounds like a very small and short lecture but as you will see there is actually a lot of intricacies and uh, lots of interesting aspects to, to be talked about here. And uh, public goods are very, very common. The purest form of public goods, maybe not so, and we will see, but there are a lot of goods out there that share at least some properties of public goods, or that have some properties of public goods. And so it's important then to know what lies behind that and what are the, the difficulties for public goods provision for a government. So the, the public goods are defined by two properties. The one is non-excludability. So what that means is that once a public good is supplied, no consumer can be excluded from consuming it. Okay, so if you think about, you know, as a simple example such as a, a, a firework display, um, even though someone probably pays for it, um, it's it's almost impossible to exclude other people from watching it. Okay? So it's not excludable. Um, and non-rivalry is the other property uh, which says that the consumption of that public good by one consumer does not reduce how much of that public good is available for any other consumer or to any other consumer. Now that's uh, that's also you know if you, if you think about the example of the fireworks um, you know, if I watch the fireworks and uh, th there is a couple of people standing next to me, the fact that I watch the firework doesn't mean that the other spectators can watch less of it, unless the access is somehow limited. Um, so let's let's think a bit further about what those properties mean: non-rivalry and non-excludability. Um, so when we look at a private good, such as a car, a house, well, anything you can pretty much purchase in, in, a, in a shop, um, that is typically excludable at no cost. So if I buy a house, I can close the door and it doesn't cost me anything to keep people out, except for maybe a bur burglar alarm. Okay, but it doesn't, I can normally exclude people at little to no cost. Um, it's also perfectly rivalrous. Again, if you think about a house, if I buy it, you can't have it. You can buy a similar house, but you cannot buy the same house that I've bought unless I sell it to you. Um, now, that was excludability or non-excludability. Um, let's talk then about rivalry or non-rivalry. So non-rivalry means that, also means that the good is not destroyed by usage. Um, and so if, if I use it, um, that doesn't mean that there is less for you. So here the house is probably not the, the, the best example, um, even though if I buy the house, you can buy it. Um, that, that would be an example for non-rivalry, but you know, if you think more simply about a, a pint of beer, if I consume it, then it's gone and, and you can't consume. You can buy a different, you know, you can buy a pint of beer yourself, but you, you cannot drink the very pint that I just had. 
Um, now, one thing that is important to point out uh, very early on when we talk about public goods, public goods do not need to be funded and provided by the state or by the government. Public goods can also be provided by anyone, by companies, by just people like you and me. Um, they don't need to be they don't need to be funded by by the government. What that means conversely is that not every good that is provided by the government is a public good. So take for example where we are here in UCD. UCD is funded by the taxpayer, is, is funded by the government, is run by government employees but is not necessarily a public good because um, there is, it, it's, you know, studying here is a good that it's, is excludable. Not everyone who wants to study here can actually study here and it's possible for UCD to exclude people based on some rules, but it's possible. Um, and there is also a limited number of spaces. So, so it, the, the, you know, if, if the number is exhausted at some point, uh, it's not possible to admit more students than the number that is also the, once it's exhausted. Then the, it's it's not possible to accept students beyond the maximum number. So it's actually also a non-rival. So it's a rivalrous good, right? If 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 more people, more of your friends, um, study here, that lowers actually the chance that you can can get a place to study here because the number of slots at UCD is, is fixed. And the, so what's so special about public goods? The, the special thing about public goods and, and why we talk about them in such great depth here is that they cannot be produced and allocated efficiently by a competitive market. So everything we learned about uh, the, the the competitive market leading to an efficient equilibrium just doesn't work here. It's just not uh, not not possible. Um, why? Well, because we have this problem of free riding. So if if you can't exclude people and you can't force them to pay for the public good where you choose not to because you want to just have a free market and everyone can do whatever they want, um, people simply have an incentive not to contribute. Because if I know that everyone else contributes, or if I assume that everyone contributes, the best action for me is not to contribute. But then if everyone thinks the same about everyone else, so if everyone is a free rider, no one contributes and the public good is not getting uh, getting produced and provided. And even though that's worse for everyone, still in individually we have the incentive to, to not contribute. To what extent people are then always so selfish or to what extent people are altruistic and actually contribute even though they could free ride, that's a different question. And I will show you in, in a later video some experimental work where it's actually, you know, where, where researchers have actually shown that people may not always be as selfish as our basic models predict, but they're by no means altruistic either. Completely altruistic either. Yeah. But, uh, but the bottom line is there is an incentive to free right with public goods and there is always a need for social cooperation. And so if you, if you think about different groups within society or different, uh, you know, different countries, um, there is certainly some countries or within countries, some groups where it is very easy to achieve social cooperation because People meet each other a lot. People know one another, trust one another. And so they, they can more easily get together. And then, then also there is some social control maybe of who contributes and, and some stigma attached to not contributing. Think about what happens a lot in sports club or, or residence associations or these type of things where people know each other very well. Um, Whereas then there, you know, you can think of, of, of other groups uh, where the, 
that are very anonymous and, and then where it's very hard to get people to actually contribute. So I said initially in this video that not all public goods are pure in the sense that they're non-excludable and non-rivalrous. Um, there are also what's called impure public goods. So these are goods that possess some but not all of the attributes of, of public goods. Okay, so for example, there are so-called congestible public goods, uh, which actually for which actually a park is a good example. Right? If you take Stevens Green, well, you know, the, the first and the second and the third person entering Stevens Green uh, will not feel like they're actually, you know, intruding in each other's space. But at some point, if, if you know, all of Dublin decides to go into to Stevens Green, and if you've ever been there on a sunny Sunday, um, you, you know what I mean, then all of a sudden, um, you can see that it's, it, it can get quite congested. And so the more people use it, the, the lower is the enjoyment for any particular person. Um, and, or for example, there are so-called club goods, that's what you can see here at the at the bottom, um, whereby the assumption of non-excludability is violated. So the idea with club goods is that the public good is available to all members of the club, but you first have to become a member of the club to be actually able to enjoy the public good. Right. So so you know you can think about all sorts of. Uh, sports clubs or other clubs where everyone can use the facilities and has to pay a membership. And then once you, you pay the membership, you can use the facilities as much as you as you want, but you need to pay that membership and otherwise you can be excluded. Right? There are certain, um, you know, so I, I, they, let, let's see what, what examples, what other examples there are. But and sports clubs are certainly one of the prime examples for club goods. So here is just the, the, the uh, typology. Oh yeah, so, so here, here is another one, uh, another example, for example, which is, uh, which is cable TV, right? So you can watch as much TV as you want, but you first need to, uh, to, be, to subscribe to one of those TV providers for, for cable TV, okay? So, so here you have on the horizontal axis, uh, the, the distinction is the good rival in consumption or not, and then is it excludable or not? And you can see a private good uh, is both rival in consumption and is excludable. So, you know, an example is ice cream, um, but pretty much anything you can buy. Okay? A, a congestible public good, on the other hand, is rival in consumption because of the congestion element, but is not excludable. Okay, so so the you know the crowded Dublin sidewalks or cycle paths, especially in this city, or also the parks would be examples for a, a congestible public good. The, the, the people cannot be easily excluded from them, or at least the, the city council decides not to exclude people. Um, but there is congestion. And then the, the, the final one is the, the goods that are non-rival and non-excludable, and that's, uh, that's a public good. For example, national defense. Um, now, I mentioned in the introductory video to this lecture what an externality is. So, so the idea of an externality is that, that the consumption or production of a particular good affects uh, the, the utility of, of someone else, another market participant, um, but that market participant um, is neither compensated nor charged for, for that externality, the fact that another market participant affects them. Example was um, air pollution in a factory, for example. Um, so, so one could also see public goods as, as a related concept public goods can be seen as being one big externality. So here is again the fireworks example. Um, if I pay for the fireworks, other people also can enjoy it. 
and uh, so so it has an externality on them but i can't charge them I, and i can't easily exclude them from seeing it right so 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 these two concepts are to some extent related public goods and externalities and more and externalities will come in a, a series of videos um, in lecture four